Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Madam uh, Clerk, you can show that we have no regrets. We have a full house tonight. Council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. Um, and uh, before we resolve and ask, before I ask for a mover and seconder to resolve in the Committee of the Whole, I wonder if the Commissioner would be so kind as to introduce our new Planning Director. Uh, with pleasure, actually. I'd like to introduce Mark Sinione, our planning, new Planning Director who started um, last week. He comes to us for with a great deal of experience, planning experience, predominantly in the, in the uh, municipal or public sector, which is very good for us. He comes directly from about 25 years with the city, or city of Greater Sudbury. So welcome to Mark. Treat him nicely over the next little while as he gets used to his new surroundings. Mr. Simeone, uh, as a fellow refugee from Sudbury, let me greet you and welcome you to the, the most livable town in Canada, Oakville. And we on council will count on you to help us uh, keep it that way and make it more livable. So thanks for joining us. Council, uh, were there two of you who'd like to move us into committee of the whole? Councillor Lapworth and Councillor O'Meara, all in favor? Opposed, if any. And we are now resolved into committee of the whole. This is our custom for planning meetings because it relaxes the rules and allows us to more, uh, more fully consult with uh, the members of the public who are here. Council, the, the, the consent items tonight include two confidential consent items. Is there a mover for the consent items? Councillor O'Meara, thank you. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. And the two confidential consent items are adopted. Um, that brings us to our public hearing item, which is the public meeting report, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision, Pendant Developments Limited and Lower Fourth Developments Limited, which is a, if I'm not mistaken, a Ward 5 development. And uh, if, um, if you'll give your attention to the podium, perhaps the planning director would like to make an introduction first. Through you, Mr. or Mayor, Mayor Burton, I'd like to introduce Melissa Dalrymple. She's a planner with West District. She'll be introducing the uh, hearing this evening. Welcome, Melissa. Council and I are all ears. Okay. This is the statutory public meeting on a zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision submitted by Pendant Developments Limited and Lower Fourth Developments Limited for the development of phase three of the preserved community in North Oakville. The report can be found on page one of tonight's agenda. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to introduce the application as well as to obtain any further public input related to this application. Following the completion of the comprehensive review of the application, staff will return in the future with a recommendation report. This air photo identifies the application area and its context with the surrounding area. Surrounding land uses include the natural heritage system to the north and lands within registered plans of subdivision, including the preserved phase one community to the east, phase two to the south, and the Davis Minority subdivision to the west. The North Oakville East Secondary Plan designates the subject lands as neighborhood area. The North Oakville Master Plan illustrates the conceptual layout for the North Oakville planning area and was approved in 2008. The Master Plan de designates the uh, subject property as, with several different designations, which include suburban area. This permits a range of low density residential uses and a density range of 15 to 35 units per hectare. The suburban area is located in this area. As well, there's lands designated for general urban area. Those lands are in this location. The general urban designation permits a range of low or medium density residential uses and a density range of 25 to 75 units per hectare. Also, we have the neighborhood center area. That's this area that's uh, in red located here. This permits a range of medium density residential development, including live work units and limited commercial uses. The permitted density range of the neighborhood center area is 35 to 150 units per hectare. 
The master plan also shows a neighborhood activity node, which is generally located here, as well as a village square located centrally. The subject property is zoned existing development by the North Oakville zoning bylaw. The proposed zoning bylaw amendment application has been submitted in order to rezone the lands to establish zoning categories and special provisions already contained within the North Oakville zoning bylaw. The proposed zoning would allow for development of blocks for residential, mixed use, stormwater management ponds and village square uses. The slide before you reflects the proposed draft plan of subdivision as submitted with the application. The proposed residential built form includes detached dwellings, townhouses, and live work units providing a total of 591 units. The proposed street network extends the existing street network that was developed within registered plans of subdivision for phases one and two of the preserved community. The draft plan also includes the location of two stormwater management ponds, which are located on the southeast portion of the lands, as well as the northwest portion of the lands. The village square that I referenced earlier is located centrally within the draft plan. And the neighborhood activity node is proposed to be located at the intersection of North Park Drive and Carding Mill Trail. A public information meeting was held on July 2nd and was attended by three residents. As a result of the notice that was sent for tonight's public meeting, two letters from the public were received and we thank the public for their comments. The letters have been distributed to council for review. The public comments will be considered and addressed in the recommendation report. In addition to public comments, the recommendation report will include a review of the following matters which have been identified to date. The appropriate mix of residential built form and densities to ensure that the distribution of land uses specified in the secondary plan are met. The layout of streets and provision of transit, cycling and pedestrian facilities. The appropriateness of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment the preservation of the natural heritage system, and integration of the design of the subdivision with adjacent existing land uses. In conclusion, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to introduce the application and to obtain any further public comment. <coughs> Staff put forth the following recommendation as shown for Council's consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Council, are there questions now before we go to the public? Councillor Noel, it's your award. Um, thank you. Um, the um, concerns expressed by the uh, residents, this is the first time I've seen them on our table tonight, so I haven't had a chance to review these in detail. Uh, have you reviewed these, these uh, letters? Yes, I have. And uh, what's your comment specifically with respect to the uh, suggestion that this is a change in the original plan in the size of the lots? Because I think the cons one of the, the, the most significant concern here is the proposed 34-foot uh, lots. Um, and folks up there had expected that they would be similar to the ones that are directly abutting, which are 45 to 50 foot. Do you have any comment on that? Um, the North Oakville secondary plan contemplates a, a range of widths uh, to be implemented throughout the plan. Um, however, the town endeavors to ensure that the communication between uh, prospective purchasers and uh, landowners is quite clear uh, in terms of setting expectations. Okay, I'll address the question. I believe probably Mr. Korsiak will be speaking to this this evening. I'll address it to him as well. But um, um, so, so there's nothing, there's, there's, there's nothing in our uh, official plan or the North Oakville secondary plan that would have committed to any specific size lots. Is that correct? No, there would have been no uh, absolute indication of the frontage width. So the only expectations that could have been generated would have been from the developer or the builder themselves towards their prospective clients, correct? I can't speak for what has happened in the in the sales trailer itself. But, but what I'm trying to suggest, what I'm trying to get to is that there's nothing that we would have done that would have in any way given them an indication or a belief that these lots would have been larger. No. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll um, oh, sorry. I know. Yeah. Um, I'll reserve further questions for uh, the applicant, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. And, and Councillor, I believe I did have a chance to read the letters. The, it seems to me the residents 
actually attribute the representation to the builder or the, the sellers. Yeah, I, I just skimmed over, but I just wanted to get that on the record to be clear. So uh, I look forward to the, uh, to the questions that you may be able to ask there. Councillor Elgar. Thank you. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have a few questions. The village square, what will be in the village square? The proposed design of the village square is consistent with the village squares that have been developed in both phase one and phase two of the preserved community. Um, so what that means on the ground is that we're expecting a play structure, pathways, a seating area, shade structures, tree plantings, and open space for residents to enjoy. So that area is less than 200 by 200 square feet. Yes. Or, it's, or, that, like it, it's so small, it's okay if you're a child under five or six, but a bigger child would not be playing there because there's not enough room to even throw a ball or it'll roll out onto the street. And I'm wondering, like, we, will we be addressing that going forward? Mr. Mayor, if I can assist uh, with the question uh, to Councillor Algar. The village square size is, is very consistent um, with what uh, we expect to see in North Oakville. The types of facilities you're look, looking at are generally speaking found in the, in the neighbourhood and community parks. Uh, we have one actually showing visually on the, um, that was in phase two, which is a larger neighbourhood facility, it's just, just to the bottom left hand corner of the, of the slide. Um, but the village square that you're showing there is the size that we contemplate for North Oakville. The, the village square isn't even within a five minute walk of the park you're talking about, for even in the middle of the village square, from what I can see. Uh, and uh, if you go back to your phase two development, you sh they were good enough to put in what you can walk to in five minutes. And I think you'll find your village square doesn't even cut, doesn't even make the cut, never mind everything to the north and to the east of the village square. So I'm just wondering, like you're putting in 592, 591, the first report said 592 and then when they finally came in it was 591 units. If you average two children to a unit, you're talking a thousand children in this area. And if you can go on and show us the open space where they can play in this area, it's, uh, it's less than half a percent of the 33, 35 hectares and where it is. I, I couldn't find where I could do anything in that either. Like I'm really trying to understand Based on back in early 2000, we had a guy called Andre Duani, who we flew up from the US. He's our guru of urban planning. And he had quite a vision of how we should be doing it. And we were going to have, like, you would think that the village square was going to have the coffee shop where everybody was sitting in the morning drinking their coffee until the bus drove by. And then they would go out and get in the bus and go, which was what he was talking about. And yet the bus doesn't even, isn't even going to go by here. It's got three stops, and none of them are where there is anything. And I'm trying to figure out how we're, we're trying to make walkable communities. I can't find anything here that is walkable and where it would stand on a walkable index. Now, and don't take it personally, it's just that with the other one being built, I've been doing a lot of driving around to try to see what we should be doing for the future. And I, this is same old, same old, except it's not because it doesn't have as much green space as we used to have in the rest of Oakville, and I'm very concerned that when people move in, there will be nowhere for their children to play within the five minute walkable area. Like, I just hope that'll be taken into consideration when it comes back. Councillor Agar, I can assure you that we will take all of those comments into consideration in terms of the walkability and the parkland, uh, and ensure that it meets the, the requirements of the secondary plan. Just, I wonder if you could show us where the urban open space is on, your, on the map. The village square is located. No, no, the open space, sorry. The village square, I know it, we, we, can, we can see that, but if you could highlight the, this open space we have. So there's the natural heritage system located north. The open space, it's, it's a total of 0.17 hectares, which is less than half a percent of the whole property, but I think you'll find out it's just a couple, three little runways is okay. all I could find when I really went into detail and looked at it. So through you, Mr. Mayor, there are three pathways located on the conceptual draft plan. These include uh, a walkway from one of the streets to the natural heritage system, um, 
from this street to the natural heritage system, as well as a walkway along the stormwater management pond. So it's really not open space where anybody can play. It is a walkway between houses. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah, I, ju I just think hopefully we can take a look at this going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Elgar. Councillor Grant. Just, just touching on that, I, I am disappointed, by the way, with the size of the uh, village square. It, it was, I was part of the Duaney tour, and, and everywhere we went, it was lovely coffee shops and Parisian boulevards. And um, This does not look like it's going to be much bigger than, uh, I believe, Horton. Oh, boy, I'm trying to remember the name of it. There, there was a smaller area. The, the Keating Park Trail is close to that, but anyways, the Horton Way Park, that's what I'm thinking of. It looks like it's going to be smaller, but to, to Councillor Elgar's point about parks, we are looking at a small section, uh, and I just want to reassure him that the, uh, there is going to be a park attached to the new school, and that park, uh, and I'd love to say on record, is possibly one of the best designs I've seen for a public park. I'm, I'm jealous it's not in my neighborhood, and great job from Chris Mark and uh, Janice Albina. Um, it has everything that you would want, skateboarding, basketball nets, and so I, I think it's, it's a great place. It is in the corner. It's difficult to see, but I believe it's a nice bike ride. So um, I, I certainly hope that at least that's taken into account. But again, when it does come to the size of the parkette, I would agree that, or the, the little village square, it does not look like what we'd all signed on for. And this is something I think we've brought up several times before in discussing the area in different developments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grant. Uh, Commissioner. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to add that when the North Oakville Secondary Plan was approved, there was a parks um, facilities distribution plan that was undertaken at that time. And the parks in the North Oakville area were designed as the neighborhood parks as slightly larger than what the parks are to the south so that you could get the kinds of facilities that you spoke of, Councillor Grant, in those locations. And so what the master plan does is set aside um, specific areas and specific minimum sizes for all the parks so we make sure we can provide the recreational elements within the park facilities. The village squares were not intended to provide that kind of active space. It was that passive relaxation area, and they were identified as being this size. Um, so through the master plan, there's a good distribution of the village squares, which is a quiet kind of gathering area, and the neighborhood parks were designed as larger spaces so they could accommodate um, the full range of community facilities. So it's, I think you need to look at the village squares, the neighborhood parks, and the walkway connections in the broader context of North Oakville. And as we bring each one of the plans forward, we're ensuring that that piece, which this is just a piece of the larger, fits within that broader picture. But certainly when we bring in the recommendation report, as Mr. Hanna had indicated, we will address those issues. But I just wanted to provide that broader context that all of these need to be considered under. Thank you, Commissioner. Councillor O'Meara. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm wondering if you can just point out where the live works are going to be. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the live work units are, there are 11 proposed. Um, they're proposed to be located in these blocks here that are fronting onto Carding Mill Trail. The proposed townhouses are going to be located in these blocks that are marked red. And do we, do we know how big the work areas, the square footage that the, of the, the work areas are that, that they're looking at? I don't have an answer for you about that at this time. Okay, well, I'd just like to, to make the point that we've seen a lot of live works come and we've seen them turn into turnstile uh, areas and I think our history with live works has not been very good. So I would, uh, I'd, I'd be very cautious about that and about building uh, revolving door workplaces for a community uh, um, that might come to rely on, on some sort of commercial or retail uh, um, area that, that's close to them. So that would just be my, my note of caution. Thank you, Councillor. Um, are there listed delegations for this, Madam Clerk? No, they're not. Are there members of the public with information for Council on this? Um, is the applicant represented here? Applicant? Councillor, did you want to ask the applicant questions? Uh, thank you for coming forward. Would you identify yourself? Good evening, and, Terry and, Korsiak, and, uh, on behalf of Manami. All right, and, and Councillor Knoll has a question or two for you. Certainly. 
Thank you. You heard my, my questioning earlier, and you've have you had a chance to review the letters that were circulated? I haven't had a chance to see them. No. Okay. So I think I understand the gist of them. No. Okay. So can you respond to that uh, to the concerns? Yeah, I, I can't uh, you know proffer any comments on what might have been said in the sales office to any prospective purchasers. All I'm aware of is what goes in with the agreements of purchase and sale. I've seen those things because that's part of the process with the town that we have to go through to advise residents of uh, future uses in, in their neighborhood. I don't think there would have been anything in writing that would have specified what size of lots would have been adjacent to them. But all of that being said, you know, these are Madame purchasers that have bought the homes on Preserve Drive and we're more than happy to work with them to try to see how, what we can do to address their concerns. And there's still a number of things we have to work through with your town staff as well. So we're pretty early in the entire uh, approvals process this evening. Um, th these these units will be sold, I assume, out of the um, the sales center in Ward Four, correct? Uh, I can't remember which corner that is. Well, there's actually two builders on this site. Remington, one of them. Remington okay. is one of them, and they have their sales office at Preserve Drive in Dundas. Okay. And Madame is the the other one, obviously. And Madame is at selling out of Proudfoot in Dundas. So, if I were to go to the sales centers and look at the the, the various maps and such, what what would they illustrate in terms of future use of those of those? Particular typically, areas? they'd just be showing future development. It wouldn't give lot sizes or anything. No, this would be, this would be they, something that potentially no, the salesman community. Yeah, because this lotting, you know, quite frankly, you know, this lotting is done through our office in cooperation uh, with our client, and this lotting wouldn't have been done at the time that these lots on Preserve Drive would have gone to sale. We're still formulating the plan for this phase at that stage. Okay, um, can you um, can you review with your client the aspect, how how this may have happened so that this doesn't come back in the when this comes back to council? Because I would I'm going to be asking this question again because I'm concerned. We've had concerns over the years about what's sold in sales centers versus yeah. what comes to fruition, and it's always us that gets left holding the bag afterwards, explaining to people that it's, we didn't do it. So um, I would, I'd like to understand the history of that and to get some assurance from the Madame and Remington sales people that, uh, uh, that in fact, you know, they're not communicating any such thing. Absolutely. That'll be done. Thank you. Any others? Thank uh, Councillor Grant. I think, Councillor Noel, sorry, I'm losing my voice. i uh, excited my children went back to school. Um, <laughs> my, I, I think Councillor Noel caught most of the questions I was going to ask and, and points I was going to bring up. If you look at both letters, though, point number two on both, and, and actually in the color copy uh, specifically brings up the fact that uh, it was the Madame A sales agents who indicated that the loss would be of a similar size. And it's getting exhausting hearing this time and again, not just from Madame A clients, but from other clients. And uh, it would be great if next time that uh, you're before us uh, and this is coming forward, uh, if we could be reassured that this would not be happening again. Mm -hmm. All right, thank we'll you. We'll do that. Oh. Councillor Noll. Sorry, I forgot to ask one more thing. You said that you, you indicated this is these early days on this on this application and it's still subject to modification. It is. It's, an, it's in the review stage right now. So okay. it's been circulated it's in the review stage. We, in fact, we have a meeting with your staff next week to, you know, to go over what was on the, uh, in Melissa's presentation on matters to be addressed. So is lot size one of the things that could still be uh, well, considered at this point? Yes, that's okay. correct. Yeah, lot size and distribution of lots and density and all those things are. Okay. That, you know, we're we're anticipating discussing that next week. Staff, can you ensure that Mr. Corsia gets copies of these letters and and please review these with your clients and and uh, provide us with a fulsome response on that. Thanks. Anything else? It's, it's special delivery straight from there. <laughs> no, that's service. You have my copies. For some reason, I'm sure I can get more. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir, for your uh, answers. And uh, uh, I think I should look to someone from Ward 5. Councillor Knoll moves the... Yeah, I'll move receipt, Your Worship. Thank you. All in favor? Councillor Elger? Yeah, just just one, one, one comment. Under the considerations under D, um, at the, on page 9 of my report. It mentions uh, managing growth and promoting a vibrant and attractive community where people want to live and work. I, I noticed play was left out. Is, it, was that because there's no place for them to play or was it just uh, normally we put that in, I thought, live, work and play. Are you sure? Maybe we don't. Maybe we don't want any kids to have any fun. I, I don't know. I, I just noticed it. I thought, wow, what, what, why don't, wouldn't we put that in? It's everywhere else. 
Um, thank you, Council. I, I would never debate you on these things. <laughs> uh, may I call the vote? Sure. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that does carry. Thank you, everyone. The next uh, thing the, on our agenda is the discussion item, the notice of intention to demolish 3388 Burnham Thorpe Road West. And uh, this, um, if you'll turn your attention to Susan Shepard, we will be reminded of what's in the report and the public will be edified. Thank you, Your Worship and members of Council. So uh, the application before you is a notice of intention to demolish for 3388 Burnham Thorpe Road West. This is a property that is uh, located uh, just at the northernmost boundaries of uh, the town of Oakville on the south side of Burnham Thorpe Road West. The property is listed currently on the Heritage Register for its circa 1899 vernacular frame house. Um, as a staff are required to do when a notice of intention to demolish is, uh, is submitted, uh, we thoroughly have researched the property and then evaluated the research findings against the criteria set out in Ontario Regulation 9-06, which defines cultural heritage value. Uh, I'll just take you very quickly uh, around the house visually. Uh, what was originally identified and the 1899 date came from MPAC, which is sometimes correct and sometimes not, um, does turn out to be a slightly later house, although we do not have an exact date for its construction. Uh, staff do believe that it was constructed sometime after 1911. Uh, based on the research that uh, staff uh, undertook, uh, it is staff's opinion that the property is not significant enough to warrant designation under Part 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act. Uh, there were no historic materials to salvage on the property. Uh, this is largely due to uh, changes over time. Uh, the residents also suffered a fire in the late 1960s as well, which did remove a lot of interior uh, features from the house as it had to be rebuilt. The foundation is completely new and there are only a few old windows left in the building which staff weren't, um, didn't consider especially important uh, in terms of their preservation. Uh, so staff have consulted with the Trafalgar Township Historical Society. They offered no objections to the recommendation to remove the property from the Heritage Register, although they did ask for clarification on several research points that have been actually included in the report that's been circulated to, to Council. There are a couple of uh, amendments made to the chain of title, uh, and so some additional details were provided uh, to satisfy, hopefully, those uh, requests. Uh, the recommendation before you is to remove the property from the Heritage Register, and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Are there questions? Councillor Noll. Uh, thank you, Worship. I don't have any issue with this particular um, um, uh, house being demolished. It's not my ward, so that would be for uh, Alan and uh, Roger to, to mention. But um, I do want to ask a general question about um, uh, historical and, and heritage homes in North Oakville, and that is, um, I never see the Unterman report being cited in any of these reports. Um, there was a lot of research done on, on, on these homes and, and assessment done on the heritage value of these homes years ago, and we spent a lot of time, we were very excited about this report, but it's never been referred to, and I can't even find it online. Can you respond? Because it, it would make it useful, make it helpful to, to read these reports in context with the previous research that's been done. Is that report available and can it be circulated and, and are we still using it as an official, as an official guide to um, heritage in North Oakville? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Knoll. The documents are still available at request. Staff does have a copy and we use it as a, I guess, a kind of a starting point for research, but as we don't cite any of the materials, it's not generally uh, listed in the bi bibliographical material. Um, Given that the information that we try to provide in these research reports is a little bit more in depth than the Unterman report, um, at, we do collect the chain of title, so we get all of the associated documents and then kind of go from there. But we certainly do have it available um, for the, we certainly have the Unterman reports available for anybody who requests them. And um, 
as to them being available online, it's my understanding that they used to be part of the uh, documents that were available for the secondary plans, and I'm not, honestly not sure uh, why they have been removed, but it's certainly something that we can look into. I would really appreciate if you could do that and report back, And um, but if you could also, I don't know if other councillors would like this or not, but I would certainly, if it's possible, to get a copy of the report. I'm seeing heads nodding. If, it, if you have it, would you be so kind as to circulate it as a refresher for all of us? Through you, Mr. Mayor, certainly. Would you prefer digital or hard copies? I always prefer digital. Thank you. The trees everywhere are thanking you. It's, um, I believe it's moved by Councillor Knoll. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. We have no confidential discussion items, and you have before you the advisory committee minutes from the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee. Um, there's one recommendation and the minutes to be received. What would you like to do? Councillor Duddick moves the recommendation and the, and the minutes. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Um, I wonder if one of you would give us a motion to rise and report to Council. Councillor Elgar, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. Um, I am looking for... I rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on conf confidential consent items C1 and C2, public hearing item 1, and discussion item 2, and advisory committee minutes item 3, as noted by the clerk. Is there a mover and seconder for this report? Councillor Grant? How about Councillor Lichina? Would you oblige? Councillor Lichina will be uh, in the minutes as a result. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, the report is adopted. Uh, now we come, I believe, to new business of an emergency congratulatory or condolence nature. And Council, I, I will only detain us for a second on this, but I have a small uh, couple of, of uh, congratulatory, celebratory things I, I, I think they might fit in. The first is that tomorrow represents a significant milestone it's the day on which Elizabeth II becomes the longest reigning monarch in British history. The day on which she breaks the record held for more than a century by her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. She will be the longest reigning of the 41 kings and queens of England since the Norman Conquest. I, uh, as your mayor, I've issued a proclamation uh, uh, to honor the occasion, which reads, we as proud Canadians celebrate the momentous day when our queen, a mother of our confederation, becomes the longest reigning sovereign of Canada. During more than 63 years as our monarch, the queen has united Canada by her example of inclusiveness, dedication, and selfless service, for which we are deeply grateful and proud, and which we pledge to try to mirror in our own lives. We send Her Majesty our respect and the hope that she will reign in health and happiness for many years to come, please join me in saying, God save the Queen, or not. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I, you know, I wish I had asked Ian to come and do that. Um, when, you, when you arrived uh, tonight, you found on your desks this item, and uh, Lynn, maybe you could put it on the podium so the people at home could read it. And I'll, I'll now explain. The gold bar is Oakville, if you look at the bars. And that gold bar is uh, number nine in this contest. And that means that only those eight to the left scored higher than Oakville on the following. We recently participated in Public Sector Digest Magazine's Open Cities Index uh, measurement of 2015. They've ranked our city against 31 other municipalities in Canada. And um, uh, as you can see, of the 31, Oakville occupies ninth spot. Uh, congratulations to uh, you, council, and staff for all the work you've done to move us forward on the yardstick of open government and open data, which is what this concerns. And I know that now that you see how high we came against so many, uh, all of us may redouble our ambition to rise even higher. I, I note that the green one, the number one, is, uh, is Edmonton.
So uh, I hope you enjoyed that bit of good news. And then I've just one more thing. And um, uh, this may not fit into congratulatory, although, hear me out, perhaps it is a bit of a congratulatory. Uh, the world's attention on the Syrian refugee crisis is increasing. In municipalities across the country, people are taking up campaigns or pledging support for programs that will raise awareness and necessary funds to sponsor families from Syria to settle here. Uh, as some examples, Mayor John Tory has pledged to join a group of friends in sponsoring a refugee family through the Toronto-based Lifeline Syria. Mayor Matt Brown of London is working with faith leaders and community organizations to raise funds to settle families in London. Mayor Linda Jeffrey of Brampton is making a donation through Lifeline Syria, and many other mayors are also taking steps to help. My family and I have also made a donation to a local group of friends working to resettle a refugee family. This group, uh, which is here in Oakville, consists of three places of worship, the Islamic Society of North America, the Mississauga branch, the Maple Grove United Church, and the Sharae Beth El Synagogue, who have been working together for six months to sponsor a family of seven and resettle them here. They are holding a fundraiser on Sunday, October 25th at the mosque at 220 South Sheridan Way. The event begins at noon. So on, on this note alone, there's a, there's a cause for uh, congratulations to them for their, their work, which began some time ago and is now uh, beginning to bear fruit. There's also a public gathering in Town Square at 8 p.m. on Wednesday, September 9th, for people to show support for resettling refugees. As well, St. Matthew Parish is working to sponsor a refugee family, as is another neighborhood group in Oakville, and that latter group have established a crowdsource funding campaign at Indiegogo and asked me to mention them. We will be working with the Social Services Department of Halton Region to assure that our normal newcomer services will be available to assist any of these newcomers too. We will also work to make it possible to get information on how to get involved in help by dialing 311. And uh, uh, I noticed on social media uh, 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 just the other day, Councillor Knoll, that you too have been involved in something, and I wonder if I, that concludes my items, and I wonder if you would like to say anything about yours. Sure, inspired by the uh, same thing that I guess inspired uh, your family and um, others that have taken up the mantle, um, I am um, compiling a group that uh, will also sponsor a family. Um, I send information out by social media to my mailing list, and there was this article in the Toronto Star Sunday, I believe. I've had over 250 replies now from people in Oakville, some of whom I've directed because of their, um, their more imminent interest to uh, the uh, multi-faith group that's doing it, but others are going to be working with me to raise the money necessary uh, and also to provide the supports. So we've had uh, outpourings of support from retired teachers who are prepared to help with ESL, um, my, uh, the agency that my, uh, my uh, wife works for and uh, Councillor Chinna is a board member of, uh, has offered to provide uh, social service integration within the community uh, and we've had uh, uh, offers of financial support from people from a few dollars up to very substantial amounts of money. Um, and uh, it's been very exciting and gratifying to uh, be involved in that. I must tell you that ever since those horrific pictures uh, showed up in the media last week, um, Lifeline Syria, who I'm in touch with and actually one of the board members is an Oakville resident, has been inundated by uh, others that have interest in this area as well. Um, and uh, all I can say to you and to everybody out there is if you are interested, be patient because uh, they, they're having a hard time maintaining uh, uh, their backlog. Um, I'm still waiting for my next steps, but I've been able to, I won't say jump the queue, but I've been calling behind the scenes a bit to get more information so I can move mine along. But uh, the, lack of, the lack of return phone calls, lack of emails is not from lack of interest, it's just from an inundation of, of interest by the general public. Uh, and if anybody wants to become involved, uh, I would reach out to everybody and suggest Find you know your local faith group that wants to do it. Contact me. Contact Lifeline Syria. They're on Twitter at Lifeline Syria uh, and on Facebook at facebook.com Lifeline Syria. Great organization, um, and uh, with uh, with our support, we can make a huge difference. And if if any community uh, can have an impact, uh, Oakville can.
Yes, as I, as I say, many communities are rising to this challenge. And I should add, as a footnote, that tomorrow at Regional Council, the chair of Halton Region is going to be making uh, some announcements on this. Uh, he has agreed that uh, uh, 311 would be a good place to uh, offer people uh, an alternative to the perhaps overwhelmed Lifeline Syria. So for simple information, uh, give us a day or two, 311 will be able to uh, assist. And uh, the theory of 311 is that you don't get as many busy tones. So thank you, everybody. Anyone else have any new business for us? If not, could we have a mover and seconder for consideration of the bylaws? Councillor Adams and Councillor Robinson. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? And that was, that was authority for bylaw 2015-088 and 2015-094, if my eyes are focusing correctly. That completes our agenda. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. It's been great working with you, and we are adjourned.